Davidson fans, thank you so much for joining me in the Stranahan's crew for a virtual cocktail class. I saw that Davidson took care of you, set you up with all the ingredients for tonight, and I'm looking forward to shaking a little cocktails with you, okay? Um, let's talk about a couple of the tools of the trade we're going to use tonight so you guys feel comfortable. We have our shakers. These are pretty cool. They're fancy. You can have metal ones. You can have dented ones. It all works the same. If you don't have these, find a pint glass. This is the Colorado method from back in the day. Put your hand right on top of it and give it a shake, okay? But if you have the complete set, we're going to fill the liquid in the big shaker. We're going to put the ice in the next shaker. And when we're ready to eventually shake, we're going to go one, two. I'm going to throw a spin in it. You're welcome to try that. And we are just going to start shaking, okay? While you're doing this, maybe practice right now. You can shake like this. You can shake one-handed so you can do some other stuff in the house if you're cooking while you're making drinks. That's always a popular one with the ladies when you can do it all, okay? Um, the next thing you want to practice after you've got your shake down, okay, is you want to make sure that this is tight. We do not want your cocktail going all over your nice clothes um, unless you're at home and you have a pool to jump into right after, okay? So the test is I'm going to make sure that's tight, and we're going to flip it over. And if this drops, then we know we got it to hit it a little harder. If it's solid, then you're good. You can even shake it to see if it comes out. If it doesn't, you're ready to rock, okay? Another tip is we're just going to tap it. I'm sure some of you have seen uh, Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore, Adam Sandler style. We're just going to tap it, and it's going to come apart real easy. Now, if you twist it, you're going to get a shriek like if Freddy Krueger went on the chalkboard, um, which will get you a lot of attention at most places, but not a lot of people are looking for that kind of attention. So um, just tap it. It'll come apart. You can set those down, and we can start talking about the brother's quarrel. If you've never heard of this cocktail, this eventually was built after a story that's been centuries old. And so I've changed the story for you to make a little more sense with the liqueur I got uh, from Davidson's and our strain of hands. So the story goes like this. Stranahan's is the father, and he had two kids. He had Canton, which is a favorite ginger liqueur, one of the best in the world. He also had St. Germain, okay? Now, both of his boys argued. They fought all the time. In fact, they don't like each other one bit. Someone thinks ginger's better. Someone thinks St. Germain's better. So this is where dad, Stranahan's, comes in and says, hey, I'm going to throw a party. I'm going to make a drink with everything you see here. And when the brothers arrived at this party, knowing that neither of them would be there, they go in and grab the glass at the same time. They realize that both of their syrups and both of their liqueurs are in this glass. They take a sip and they crush their brother's coral right there on the spot. Thanks to American single malt, thanks to whiskey. And that's how the brother's coral kind of ends. Okay. So let's take it a step further and let's create this new classic old classic we can call it classic all over the board, okay? So we're gonna start with the strain of hands. It's a marriage of two, three, four, and five-year-old barrels. Um, if you are drinking this by yourself, nose it first. Think butterscotch, vanilla, caramel, uh, really sweetness on the top, but a light sweetness, okay? It is 94 proof, but because of the 100% malted barley, it's gonna finish like an amazing scotch. So you're not even gonna think it's 94 proof. In fact, you're gonna say, I'm gonna have another is what you're gonna say, okay? So let's take this. Now, some of us have jiggers, some of us have buckets, some of us have measuring devices. I'm a bartender, I'm a mixologist, so I count my pours. And so I wanna teach you that as well, okay? So a one and a half ounce pour to me is a three count. Everybody counts different. So let me show you what I mean, okay? So I'm gonna go one, two, three. To me, that is one and a half ounces. Now I could check myself in a, in a measuring jigger or a, uh, bucket or any kind of a beaker that holds milliliters or ounces, um, but I'm pretty solid on that mark. If you are a um, heavy drinker, I would not go over two ounces of this because that kind of takes over the cocktail, but two ounces is the limit, but start with one and a half, okay? Let's move to Canton. If you've never had this before, this is, um, this is the best ginger liqueur out there. Most ginger liqueurs are very sugary, so we don't use this a lot when it comes to um, quantity of liquid in the drink. So we're just going to use a ounce of this in our cocktail. Once again, use a jigger if you're not comfortable pouring it, but I'm going to show you what my one ounce count is, okay? 
One, two, boom. A little quicker than that last one, but I got one ounce of Canton. I got one and a half ounces of the American single malt known as Stranahan's. Now one of my favorites, St. Germain. Um, I like these little bottles because they still keep the same shape and I can bring them almost anywhere. They do sell the big bottles at Davidson's and those are good for your home bar. But if you're traveling, you're going to the picnic or the mountains, bring a small bottle so it's easier to transport. You can keep it in the cooler so it's nice and cold. But elderflower liqueur is very floral. Um, to the point of maybe when you smell it, you think you're in the middle of a bunch of flowers and they're blooming and it's just a great smell, okay? Now, if you've never tried this, always try your ingredients before it goes in. I want you to go ahead and taste a little bit of it, okay? It kind of gives you like this, hey, it's summertime kind of feel. And so this goes good in a lot of cocktails if you use a little amount of it, okay? So we are gonna use a half an ounce of this. Now, because I have this little guy, I don't pour out of him a lot, so I am gonna measure him, okay? Now, let me grab my bucket, two seconds here. Now, I can use a, my measure jar here. I can use all sorts of stuff, but my favorite thing is, is gonna be the cap on the top of the bottle, which I have plenty of here at Stranahan's. So if you come down when we open uh, this 19th, Friday, you can take all these you want. They're good for a uh, bar. They're good for carrying the purse kind of shot glass or drink glass. So uh, we have plenty here if you want to come grab one. But go ahead and take one of these. They have an ounce, two ounce, and three ounces to the top. I'm going to pour a half ounce of St. Germain in there. And I'm going to dump it right into my shaker. Okay. Now, don't be afraid to take a smell. Oh man, it smells bright, refreshing. Um, I can feel the sun coming down on me, even though I'm inside right now. That's how refreshing this smells, okay? So what we're gonna do next is I fresh squeeze some lemon juice. Um, because it's been sitting for a little bit, I'm gonna have a little sediment. Always shake your juice. Um, I'm sure some of us have gone to the fridge and slammed some OJ out of it one night out of the gallon. It just doesn't taste as good if it's not shaken. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a half ounce of lemon juice. So that's a real quick pour for me. So one, boom, okay? Now you can measure it, you can squirt that in there. When you start become more um, professional at this and you start doing it more every day, you'll start squirting things in there and you'll know your ounce counts, okay? So we got everything in there. We got lemon juice, we got ginger liqueur, we got American single malt, we got St. Germain. Now I'm gonna teach you what dirty ice is. Um, I'm sure not a lot of people know what that is, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our tumbler and we're gonna use this glass today. If you have a martini glass, this works too, okay? Um, I want you to fill that glass full of ice, okay? And you're probably wondering, why is he putting that much ice in it? Because no one wants that much watered down ice on there. But what we're doing is we are gonna create our own little um, shake, ice crushed cocktail with this, with this experiment here. So we're gonna dump all this ice right into that shaker, okay? We're gonna keep that glass because it's nice and chilled and we can use it for our cocktail at the end. This is where we're gonna have some fun, you guys. We're gonna shake for 30 seconds. No holds bar, I need you to shake as hard as you possibly can. I am gonna um, bring in a little James Brown to help us with that, okay? So on three, we're gonna go one, two, and then we're gonna do it. Are you guys ready? I can't hear you, but I know you're saying it. I'm ready, let's do this. Let's put on some music, let's jam. And uh, on three, one, two, three. Start shaking, you guys. Shake as hard as you can. Use that one hand shake. If you're comfortable with that, why not, right? Why not, okay? Let's have a great time. The harder you shake, the better this cocktail will be, okay? 10 more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Woo! I'm not gonna charge you for the gym membership today, okay? It's on me. The shake weight is actually a cocktail set. That's where that idea came from, okay? So remember, we're just gonna tap it because we shook it so hard. And it's going to be frozen together, okay? But tap it, bring it up. If you really want to get all the drops, you leave it over there for a couple seconds. Not going to lie, when I go to a bar and I pay maybe 12, 15 bucks for a cocktail, I want every drop out of that shaker, okay? Now, this is the best part. 
We put in too much ice in this glass and we shook the hell out of it. It is ready to be put in here and that is what we call dirty ice. Notice that my drink is below the cocktail glass even though I put so much ice that it was over pouring, okay? This drink is almost complete. We're missing a couple things. I love garnishes, you guys. That's like my thing. If a drink doesn't have a garnish, I'm gonna send it back. I'm still gonna pay and be super nice about it, but I'm gonna ask for a cool garnish, okay? So a peeler, a lemon. You gotta take a nice, good peel, okay? If you get a lot of pith, no big deal. It's okay, we really just want all the oils, okay? What you're gonna do is boat and keep the pith pointed at the sky so the oils shoot out from above when you pinch it. Now, if you don't have a lighter, it's okay. You're gonna wanna try this trick later, but if you do have a lighter, we are gonna set the oil on fire, okay? And no, that's not a new rap song. That's just what we're gonna do, okay? So the idea is we're gonna hold this lighter sideways because if you hold it upside down, butane actually comes out. We do not want that in our cocktail, okay? So if you hold it sideways, the butane burns up. We will hit this oil from an angle, okay? Okay, sot spark up. Little blackness here. You guys can keep trying that over and over and over until you are done with it, okay? Circle the glass. You can put it in the glass. You can lay it on top if you just want a cool design. If you have cherries or something, you can put a cherry on there. It looks pretty cool. But I want to thank you guys for enjoying the first cocktail, the Brothers Coral. I think it's time we cheers. Salute. Yes, yes. So hopefully that sip was as good as my sip was. When you smell it, the burnt lemon oils is amazing. Now, we'll walk through these ingredients one more time. So we have an ounce and a half of Stranahan's original whiskey. We have one ounce of Domaine Canton, a ginger liqueur. And these bottles are amazing. Just be very careful once you've opened one up. You're not gonna use too much of it at a time. So when you put the cap back on, if you don't use it for a week, the sugar might stick to the cap. And when you go to twist it, you might crack the whole bottle. So remember, just if it doesn't open right away after you've used it, put some hot rag on it, put her hot water on it, and it'll, it'll make it easier to open, okay? And then a half ounce of St. Germain. Um, now, if you guys really like St. Germain, you can up the count to an ounce. Anything over that, it's gonna be called the St. Germain cocktail, okay? <laughs> All right, and then the fresh squeezed lemon's a must. You guys are welcome to buy lemon juice at the store. Um, either one works, but the clarity of the cocktail is part of the clarity of that fresh squeezed um, lemon juice. If it was cloudy lemon juice, we'd have a cloudy cocktail, which isn't bad. Most people aren't gonna notice, but once you've had this, your taste buds are gonna notice. Um, the dirty ice technique, don't forget to fill that glass, overfill it. It's your house, get messy. Um, you know, my favorite thing about brooms and mops are is cleaning up after the party and reminiscing about how fun it was, okay? So get messy, get, get a little crazy and detail. And then, if you're struggling with the lemon peel, A, the lemon might be warm from sitting out all day, so it doesn't express as many oils as you want. Always wash your lemons because it's gonna help express the oils, but just keep trying over and over again until you get a really big one. And once you get that really big one, you're gonna be so happy you did that. And then that's a really cool party trick too, okay, you guys? Um, so do you guys have any questions or you have any like um, something maybe you guys would change that maybe I would like, maybe you want an orange peel. Um, all peels uh, flame like that. Grapefruit, lemon, orange. The big deal is why I use lemon is because it wakens me up. Orange makes me relaxed. Grapefruit, if you guys come over to my bar and we have a grapefruit drink together, we're all gonna be up and having a great time because there's a lot of energy involved in those oils. Um, Let's take one more sip. Just, you know, make sure the first one wasn't a fluke. Okay, it's getting better actually as the ice starts to separate. When you dump the dirty ice in there, it's all clumped. And then give it a second, breaks apart. I mean, we just need to open up the sunroof now and get those tropical uh, trees in here. Um, so how are we feeling everyone? Is everyone feeling good? Okay, um, I want you to relax for at least one minute so I can set up for the next cocktail. I'm gonna put some more tunes on unless you guys want a free for all talk, I'm not sure. But tunes it is, okay, sounds good. We're gonna roll with some more James Brown because we're feeling funky today, okay? Give me one minute.
All right, everybody. Hopefully I didn't take too long. Hopefully you were at least half finished that cocktail. I obviously don't want you to chug a cocktail with 94 proof in it unless you want to, okay? <laughs> All right, that's up to you. Um, okay, so that was one of my classic cocktails. That is something that I'm gonna start someone out with that really wants to get into a spirit or spirits. Um, it wants a liquor collection of different bottles out. But now we're in summer. And that's one of my favorite times to create cocktails. Fruits are bountiful. There's herbs and spices growing everywhere. If you're into making bitters and you're into hiking, you can go to tree line and get high floral ingredients and make all sorts of fun stuff with it, okay? Um, but this idea called the strawberry swing, also known as AKA the strawberry peppercorn, also known as one of the funnest patio pounders that you'll make for your parties, um, came to me through actually eating Food. I know it sounds silly, but I'm eating a salad with strawberries and some fresh ground pepper was added. And I just loved both of those together. So I was like, why can't I make a cocktail with both of these ingredients? And of course, who doesn't love a strawberry rhubarb pie? If you haven't had one before, please try to find one and just maybe share a, a slice with somebody. It is a little sweet. You don't want the whole piece. But um, all those things brought you the strawberry black peppercorn lemonade with rhubarb bitters okay so a couple things here we're going to stick to the shaking because it felt good right let's keep shaking if we if we got it okay we are now bringing a hawthorn strainer into the game okay now this one's cool it's real fancy and shiny i've been doing this for a long time so i buy that stuff you guys can buy cheaper ones you can buy all sorts of different styles but this is my style it's really cool the spring here is going to actually keep things from coming out, which what I mean is if we're mixing with black peppercorn or fresh mint, or if we muddle anything, we're gonna have a lot of pulp. We don't wanna drink the pulp. So what we do is we push this forward on the shaker and then we pour out through these little holes. And then next thing you know, you got a whole awesome drink without all the pulp, the muddling in it and the flavor there, okay? So a Hawthorne strainer is a must. Uh, I wanted to bring out a bucket. This is just a new version of a jigger. A lot of people use it. You can use it for flour, sugar. You can use it for any measuring at home. This is a fun one to have, okay? Um, I made you some rhubarb bitters today. Um, if you're interested in making them, this is how I make it because I'm at one of the greatest places in Colorado, Stranahan's, and I actually take a bottle of Stranahan's whiskey and I'll use five ounces of that mixed with a few slices of rhubarb, and I'm gonna let it sit with one cinnamon stick for two, three months. This one's been sitting actually for four months, so it's got a really nice dark red color, and that's what I want. Visually, it's, it's nice to look at. Um, 
fresh strawberries we're going to use for a garnish. We got the fresh uh, rhubarb used for a garnish because I had some. Um, now, most of us have had lemonade. You might have bought the strawberry lemonade, um, but I'm going to show you how to make lemonade, okay? So what I would do is I would start my hot tea kettle, okay? Um, this is a nice easy one. I just flick it on, heats it up, no problem. I got hot water. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour a little hot water, okay? No big deal. Then I'm going to add some sugar. And what I'll do is I'll take about one liter of water to one cup of sugar, and I'm just going to pour some out right into there, okay? Now it's hot. We're going to stir it. It's going to create a simple syrup, okay? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of these lemons. I'm going to get the biggest knife I can. I don't know why. And I'm just going to squeeze that lemon in there. I might even throw that whole thing in there, okay? Then I'm just going to let it sit. If I like the pulp in it, I'm going to let the lemon stay in there. If I don't like pulp, I'm going to strain it out. Every day is different for me and every cocktail is different. So it's however you want it at home, okay? So now you know how to make the lemonade. So we got lemonade. Um, now the strawberry syrup. You can either A, grab these strawberries and muddle them into your big shaker. Um, I don't think you get as much flavor out of that. So that's why I'm going to tell you to, again, grab that really hot water. No problem, right? Okay. Grab that sugar, no problem, okay? And then we're gonna take those strawberries, we're gonna cut them up, we're gonna throw them right in there. Um, I'm not gonna throw in this one, I'm gonna eat this one, because you don't waste the strawberry, okay? Because they're that good. So boil that down for a good 30 minutes, you'll see the color come out, the strawberries, you don't have to take the green off at all. And then once that's sat, you're gonna put it in a, um, a really fine mesh strainer, you're gonna put it in a cheesecloth, and you were gonna wring out that strawberry juice and what you're gonna have is this nice red strawberry syrup, okay? You can buy strawberry syrup too. It's just up to you. I mean, if you're at Davidson's and you don't have time to make that strawberry, they have a strawberry liqueur there. I know they do. They probably have a strawberry everything because they got everything, okay? So that's one thing you can do. Um, but if you wanna make it and you have some strawberries, please do, it's the best, okay? So now you kinda know what we got except I did leave out one thing. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Black peppercorn. I mean, it's, I haven't met one person that doesn't like it. And I'm very sorry if you don't, if you don't like it, please just leave it out of the equation. It'll still taste good. But we want a little spice because we're going to add some sweetness to it. So I got a, a tri-color peppercorn medley and it came with a little grinder. If you don't have a grinder, you have some peppercorns, just get a little bag put it on there and give it a couple smashes, okay? And get it nice and broken up. If you have one of these, I want you to take your big shaker and I want you to give it a one, two, three, okay? Now we can add more later after we taste it and you find out where your pepper um, palette is, okay? Because everyone has a different pepper palette, okay? So we got the fresh ground pepper. We're gonna take that house made lemonade that we just made <laughs> kind of and we are going to take two and a half ounces of that now the two and a half ounces is pretty much to the top of my bucket here um it's okay if you do three ounces um i'm using a collins glass a tall skinny one you can use a tumbler you can make this in a, tar a martini you could get out a fun tiki drink glass and just put a bunch of ice in it but you'll probably want to up the count to like four or five ounces of these ingredients, okay? But we're going to do a skinny Collins glass. Um, notice how I haven't put any ice in that yet because I don't want the ice to melt in the, the heat of the room. I don't want to get distracted while making a drink and then the ice melts and then I pour a cocktail on a watery glass, okay? Because then you'll taste it and you'll be like, oh, it's taste watered down and then we'll have to start from the beginning. But, okay, you're going to take a full bucket or two and a half ounces of that fresh made lemonade. If it's been sitting out, no big deal. If you bought strawberry lemonade, use three and a half ounces of it, okay? So we're gonna go, now because I have a squirt bottle and that's a high count of ounces, I'm gonna measure it. So we're gonna fill this whole thing up and right in there on the peppercorn, okay? All right, now that strawberry syrup. Um, if you wanna muddle the strawberries, please do. Throw four, five, maybe six of them in there. Crush them pretty good, okay? Because you want all the flavor, you want all the red out of it. Um, but we're gonna use the syrup today, and I'm gonna use one ounce of it. Now this is house-made strawberry syrup. If you bought your syrup, lower this count 
to a half ounce because the homemade syrups have a little more sugar in it. I use less sugar and more strawberries, so a little more flavor, okay? But we're gonna go right in there. And you guys, if you have any questions, please fire them at me. If you don't have peppercorn and you have some different pepper or you have maybe actual peppers like Anaheim's or Poblano's or something, we can turn those into that easily and I can teach you how, okay? So we got strawberry, we got black peppercorn, we got uh, the house-made lemonade, now the bitters. Um, Davidson, if you can't find the rhubarb bitters, we'll order it for you, okay? They might be sold out, because uh, I like to buy their bitters a lot, okay? So dash counts is how we talk about bitters as bartenders. Some people say you have to hold bitters like this and go, you know, one, two, okay? This is your time, this is your place, this is your cocktail, you do it however you want. You can go behind the back, you can like throw it in the air and catch it and go bam, like I just did. You can do however you want, but you wanna get at least two dashes in there. Now because I did it all crazy for you guys, I dropped probably three or four dashes in there, but I love rhubarb bitters, so I'm okay with that, okay? Now you guys are probably like, we're missing the most important part, the Stranahan's. So let's get to the Stranahan's. Now the cowboy shot glass, the cowgirl shot glass, remember it's three ounces to the top, but we are not going to do that, okay? <laughs> we are gonna go an ounce and a half. Now, if you have someone at your house you're making this for and they're like, I don't like whiskey or I'm not sure I like whiskey, start at an ounce and then uh, they will be sure to love American single malt, just like I do, okay? Um, so let's do it, one and a half ounces, now that was my three count, but I measured it in the jigger for you guys, okay? Now, give you guys a little time to catch up. Um, while you guys were doing your thing today, I got here early, I went to the store, I went to get some fresh rhubarb for you guys, and I wanna show you kinda how I would design it on a drink. So, I like to cut the rhubarb real thin, okay? And then what I'll do is I will split the rhubarb with just a small knife, paring knife, and cut it. So it makes a little like kind of like, you know, a little stick figure, man. And what I'll do is at the end of the drink is I'll put it on just like that. Okay. And you guys can do this to a bow if you cut them thin enough and stick a skewer through them. Um, what we'll be doing is adding a strawberry and rhubarb together, but we'll get to that in a minute. I just wanted to make sure you guys are caught up. Okay. So what we're going to do is we are going to grab that ice and we are gonna put the ice in the small one. The reason being is once I put the ice in here, it needs to be shaken almost right away because we're starting to dilute it. And we need time for that because we need to fill up our Collins glass too. So we're gonna fill up our Collins glass. Did I mention we're open next Friday the 19th in case you guys run out of ingredients, you guys can come have one of these here with me, okay? I'll make it for you personally on Friday the 19th. Yeah, that's right. We are getting back to the OG world, you know? And we're gonna be safe about it, you guys. We have plenty of, plenty of safe things in, in uh, act here. Okay, now, gonna play some more James Brown for you guys, okay? <laughs> Hopefully you didn't get tired of him. Hopefully he's still, you know, got to be jiving, ready to shake. But just like before, we're gonna go one, two, smack, three, shake, okay? How's everyone feeling? Anybody behind? Anyone need more time? Any questions? Okay, sounds good, you guys. I'm loving it. Um, Let's get the, the jam on, okay? So on three, are you guys ready? One, two, three, shake it! Shake it like you make it, you know, because you made it. It's your cocktail. Now remember, if you feel comfortable, get in there. Try different shakes out. Everybody's body's different. I can't shake like this all day. I have to have my body together, and I want the ice, to hit back and forth, back and forth. All right, you guys, 10 more seconds. Keep it going. Oh, I'm getting tired, but this is for you. This is for Davidson. This is for Shanahan. Five, four, three, two, one. Woo! Okay, all right, hold on one second. Okay. Just had to get that last shake out, okay? Now remember, just tap it, just tap it. When we tap it, see that? I just tapped it, still not out because I shook it so hard it's practically frozen. So I'm just gonna keep tapping it. 
bring it apart. I'm watching the rest of this cocktail drip out. I'll say it every day, but if I go to a bar and I pay 12, 10, $15 for any cocktail, I want everything in the shaker in my glass. Okay, we are ready to rock. Hawthorne strainer, right on top of our chilled Collins glass. Look at that color, you guys. Now, if you shook extremely hard, if you put a ton of ice in, you might have extra. Looks like we're pretty good there. We're gonna grab that rhubarb. I've cut a bunch of different pieces. I'm gonna pick my favorite one for you guys. Okay, what we're gonna do is again, find the biggest knife in the house. Go ahead and give that strawberry a little cut down the middle. Put it right on there. Now here at Stranding Hands, we do care about the environment. We, got, we went out of our way and got hay straws, okay? Hay straws are awesome. They don't taste like hay, they don't smell like hay, but they work exactly like a straw, they're compostable. And right now what we have is the strawberry swing. And I told you guys earlier, I love ground pepper, I love the black pepper, so I'm gonna take that pepper meal and I'm gonna go one, two. And there you have it, you guys. Skip your salads, skip your dinners. This is a meal all in itself, okay? <laughs> Let's all take a sip together, cheers. Uh, thank you so much for coming in or having me uh, here with you guys. Okay. I didn't want to stop drinking that. I didn't want to chug it all in front of you either. Okay. So um, hopefully that turned out as good as this one tastes. I'm so happy you guys took 10 minutes out of your day so we could create a lifetime together. Um, do we have any questions? Do we have any like uh, stories? Maybe you guys want to tell me how you would do this maybe with different uh, ingredients or you could make an orange aid you can make a lime aid um what are we thinking uh the lemon agave nectar yes the lemon agave nectar no the lemon agave nectar was not in any of these this is uh the first one was uh lemon juice the second one was house made lemonade um sorry if those got mixed up now the agave is going to taste great in here if you did use the lemon um, but this was the lemonade in there. What else are we thinking, you guys? And how'd your cocktails turn out? Did anyone, I mean, if you got a thumbs up, show us a thumbs up. If you weren't sure, if you maybe you added too much pepper, please tell me and we can dial it in for next time. Okay, I get a lot of people coming in the lounge and maybe one out of a couple thousand people have asked me for a snowflake cocktail, okay? Um, most of the time, people at the bar look, look at this person and they ask, why would you do that? And I think about that sometimes. I've had cocktails that are $25 just to say I had it. I'm not going to say that was the best cocktail I've ever had in my life, but I would say the snow is really reserved for the flavor by itself. Um, it's aged in multiple different barrels, um, different four years put into different barrels lasting for different years. Some of them are, un I mean, it's just, it's, it's too much flavor, too much quality to put into the snowflake. Um, but what you guys can do is because I have Mount Bross and I have Mount Bierstadt, uh, we're going to surprise people on the 19th and serve both of those that day. So if you guys want to come in, you can try two snowflakes at once, which is a very rare thing. You're going to want to brag about it to your kids when they finally learn about spray hands. Okay. Um, and the Diamond Peak. Best cocktail, diamonds on the inside. It's my version of an old fashioned. I do serve it here in the lounge. Um, take your recipe and throw it out, you guys. You only need simple syrup, bitters, diamond peak, and uh, a yari. Um, I got a yari for you guys. So a yari is gonna be what we stir all cocktails made with liquor, okay? So if I make an old fashioned, if I make a Manhattan, I'm always stirring it, not shaking it. The reason being is I'm creating a dilution with this Yari. So when it gets to the table, you guys just start drinking it. Next thing you know, it's gone because <laughs> it tasted that good. It was diluted perfectly. Sometimes when you get those drinks that you take a first sip of and they're so strong that you have to wait a minute to drink it, it's because it wasn't diluted. They just poured it probably right over ice, didn't shake it, didn't cool it. Um, so those things are necessary to have one of those really good cocktails that you guys talk about. Um, but 
if you want, come on down 19th. I'll show you how to make one of the best diamonds on the inside. You can uh, sit at one of my tables. I'll, I'll walk you through it. Uh, just tell me that we met through here. Okay. <laughs> I can't see you. So um, what else are we thinking you guys? Yes. Yeah, so the strawberry simple syrup. Okay. So I use a hot water heater most of the time because I'm usually, okay, I'm on a time constraint. These things heat up real quick, but you guys have time at your house. So grab a heat pad, grab your stove top, get a pot out, throw a whole pound of strawberries in there. Okay. Uh, one of those whole packages, just throw it in there. You can you cut the green off if you want. You can cut them in little pieces, but you could just throw them in there. Okay. What you want to do is remember, we're going to add some sugar. Okay. Now, I'm gonna break it down for you. So you use 32 ounces of water, 16 ounces of sugar, and a whole pound of strawberries. And you are gonna boil that. Now you don't want it boiling, so it's like a high heat. You want it on medium heat. And once it starts boiling, once you start seeing the color, I want you to grab a strawberry out. If it mushes right away, then I want you to turn the boil off. And then as it cools, you're gonna cheesecloth strain it. That's the best way to do it. You're gonna dump that right into your cheesecloth uh, that's in a, in like a colander strainer. And then once it's strained through, uh, into a, you know, a bucket or a sort of set a colander or something, you're going to squeeze all that orange, uh, excuse me, all the strawberries out and get all the juice out, uh, leaving the black pit, leaving the green and leaving the skin out. Um, that is the best way to do it. Um, and right now strawberries are pretty cheap. So you can make a bunch of this and store it. You can freeze it. You can keep it in your fridge for probably like six to eight months. Um, but it won't last that long because you guys are going to be making cocktails all summer. Hey, Keegan, you're, you're muted. Hey, Keegan, you're muted. Me a drink. Okay. Want to zoom it in there so you don't think I'm saying anything bad. <laughs> okay. But this is gonna be $32, serving of four, and you guys are always welcome to come down the distillery. They're kept cold for you. I usually make them fresh every week and a half, um, and they're a nice treat to have when you're just, hey, I got home, I don't wanna make a cocktail, so I'm gonna shake up my bottle, I'm gonna get my ice out, and I'm gonna pour it right on top, and then I'm gonna hang out with my family, or hang out with your friends, or have some alone time, <laughs> okay? Um, hey, Keegan, now that's one of them. Let me bust out one more so you guys you know mute. the variety okay. that is coming out of here. The next one is going to be the raspberry beret. It's going to be a fresh vanilla bean, a uh, house-made raspberry simple syrup, whiskey, and that lemon agave you guys were talking about. So that one's always fun, and it's a great color. You can mix it with champagne. You can mix it with soda water. You can have these cocktails mixed with those style of um, – uh, cordials and those style of bubbles and it'll turn out really amazing uh, this is one of our favorites we have people coming in left and right I'm consistently making our coffee infused strain hands um, thank you Jared Polis for allowing us to do cocktails to go and now people can finally get their hands on the coffee infused whiskey uh, we cold brew it for 72 hours we use a local coffee we had vanilla bean brown sugar and plenty of that American single malt because we can't do without that so um, please come down, check one of those out. Um, and what else are we thinking? Okay. Raspberry. Okay. Sorry guys. Went on mute for a sec. Um, we got the raspberry beret. Okay. That's going to be one of our, uh, summer cocktails to go. Um, it'll be around for a limited time, but fresh raspberries, vanilla bean, a lemon agave mix that you guys were talking about earlier. Um, and it's just a treat. You can add it to champagne. You can add it to soda water if you want to make like a Colin style uh, cocktail. Uh, really, you can use these for everything. The best thing to use them for, though, is just pouring them right in your glass and having it, you know, at dinner or before dinner or for breakfast, you know, Saturday, Sundays, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so what else are you guys thinking? Um, we're always going to be here for you guys. Um, so if you have any other questions, I'm here for you. Oh, nice. So the ginger liqueur is 
really my way of getting out of drinking a Moscow Mule most of the time, okay? I like classic cocktails, so what I would do is create a Moscow Mule classic. So what I mean by that is most people are grabbing ginger beer, lime, and vodka, okay? We make them here with whiskey. A little more power for your punch, a little more flavor added with the whiskey. Um, but what I'll do is I'll make an old fashioned and my ginger beer will be the Canton, okay? So I will use one and a half ounces of whiskey. I'll use my sugar being the Canton instead of the simple syrup at a quarter ounce. If you really love it, use a half ounce, but don't go over that, okay? And then we're gonna add the house made bitters usually, or you go into the store, Davidson's, and grab some Angostura bitters. I know they have that on the shelf. Um, and then we're gonna stir it dilution. And um, we can talk more about that in a future date, or you guys come see me on the 19th and I'll show you how to do it. And we can forget the carbonated ginger beer cocktails with the Canton, okay? You can use a bar spoon of it on your uh, favorite martini. You can uh, drink it on the rocks. Um, I don't know if you've ever made a ginger cello before, but that's a good way to start. In fact, you can make that with our whiskey. You could take the Stranahan's bottle, dump it into a mason jar, throw a ton of ginger in there, throw about an ounce of the Canton in there, and then let it sit for the rest of the month. At least three or four weeks, okay? Don't touch it, don't think about it. Maybe set a reminder on your calendar uh, so you do remember it, okay? Um, but that would be a good way to, to do things as well. So um, what else can you guys? So right now, going forward, we will have our lounge open to half occupancy and we will have a full tent with all the goodies out there um, the 19th. So you will definitely see me here. I will be here all day. Uh, but you cannot reserve anything, but um, should be plenty of seating for you. Um, I'm always wearing this mustache. You guys will see it through a uh, face shield instead of this bandana. So I'll look a little different, but um, please come down. Please say hi to us. Um, now we don't offer our tour yet. That's gonna come at a later date, but I want you to write down this tour code. So when we do open, you can take a free tour and it's good for up to 10 people. So if you guys are ready, capital L, capital T, three, six is gonna get you up to 10 people uh, on a, one of our regular tours, okay? And that's not, uh, we're not ready for that yet. We're still working out, but that will be back and running eventually. And I can't wait to see you guys so I can actually meet you in person. <laughs> um, so other than that, we'll have a full menu. We'll have uh, options for food. And um, yeah, I hope we can see you guys here. And what else we got, you guys? Sounds like everyone had a good time. Sounds like you, uh, you, you are now full mixologist. So when the snow starts falling again, I can call on you to work for me on a powder day. Okay. Um, thanks again for coming. I couldn't do this without you guys. Thank Davidson liquors. They are the best for hooking us up together, uh, teaching us, uh, that we need to be together for this to work. Okay. And remember if you have a brother squash the quarrel, okay, get some whiskey and squash that quarrel. Life will be better. Trust me. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Um, signing off. I'll see you in the future. Thank you, Lucas. And thank you, Keegan. Um, we appreciate you guys being here. Um, just last minute, thank yous again to Davidson's. And um, as always, uh, we have one last one um, next week. Um, if it would go next week, one last one of these um, series next week. And then that will close out our mixology series for now. Um, hopefully we will have some others in the future, maybe some in-person ones, fingers crossed soon, but, um, thank you for, um, being a part of this and we really appreciate Strain Hands and, um, Lucas, um, giving us his time tonight. So thank you. Thanks all.